This is the Antec cooler box. It's part of their new line of coolers. Okay, this is a high performance CPU cooler. It's compatible with Intel and AMD. They say it is an easy install kit, which we will find out in not too long from now. The heatsink material is aluminum. It has eight six millimeter heat pipes, and I think uh, they're describing the way that it has four heat pipes going through the base, and then each side uh, goes up four times. So it's a total of eight effective heat pipes by using this dual tower design. It uses a 120 millimeter PWM fan capable of spinning from 700 to 2000 RPM, and it uses a four pin connector to power the fan. CPU support is everything. So AM2, AM2+, AM3, LGA775, LGA1156, and LGA1366. With a lot of these coolers, performance is so close these days, it really does come down to ease of installation, uh, the weight uh, that's being put on your CPU socket, and aesthetic factors, other things like that, the intangibles. So overall, I like the look of it already. Let's go ahead and get this out of the box. I like that they've got a bit of a darker finish on the aluminum that I'm accustomed to seeing. Okay, so let's just... Wow, this is a lot bigger than I had thought it was based on the box. I thought that the box was going to be sort of uh, more packing material and less cooler, but there's a whole lot of cooler in there. So the first thing we find inside is an installation guide, which is zero text. It is all picture. I love it. It must be simple if they don't need to describe anything. Oh, and it's not even as many steps as I thought. The back is only two steps. So we're going to go ahead and figure out the installation a little bit uh, later. Not in this video. I'll be doing an installation video of it uh, hopefully sometime this week. Let's have a look at the mounting hardware that we have included. So first of all, we have a back plate. Then we have a 1366 uh, backplate, an 1156 backplate, and these backplates are kind of unique in that it looks like you actually just take an adhesive off, you put those through the holes in the back of the motherboard, and there you go. So Antec saves on materials, um, and everybody wins. You save on the cost of this particular heatsink, and you don't actually lose any structural integrity here. These should be just fine. These are quite thick pieces of metal, even though you're just using two strips on either side of the back. Very in innovative. Here's an AM2 bracket. Here's 775. Oh, what is this for then? Now, just a minute. How does this work? Okay, well, we'll figure that out in the installation guide. Oh, these must be the top pieces. So some of these are back plates, some of them are top pieces, and we'll have to sort of sort that out later. Here's a little wrench. It's very adorable. Some Dynatron uh, thermal compound. And then we have two sets of uh, thumb screws, one for AMD and one for Intel. So I'm going to go ahead and assume the AMD one just uses the stock AMD backplate, and these Intel ones are threaded for the Antec backplates that are included. Now let's have a look at the cooler box itself. You can see right here it does use a direct touch mechanism for the bottom. So you're not going to be able to demonstrate that it's uh, completely flat because that's not really the point of these, but I'll do the obligatory finger shot thing anyway that everyone always complains about. You know what? Too bad. Uh, it seems to be machined quite flat. There are some slight ridges between the heat pipes and the aluminum bits in between, but that is to be expected. They're quite shiny heat pipes. I've seen shiny ones and not shiny ones. I don't know that it makes any difference to cooling performance whatsoever. In fact, I suspect it doesn't but uh, that doesn't really matter. They've kindly labeled the airflow for you on this one. So here we go. Let's have a look at the fins. First of all, the fins are what I would consider about a medium density. So they're not super tight, but they're also not super wide. So that means that you're gonna have, you're gonna have to have a fan that finds a good balance of uh, static pressure to uh, pure CFM in between. Now, Antec is using what appears to be a custom fan, and I don't know if you're going to be able to replace it. So that could be uh, a slight problem for people who like to replace the stock fans that are included with their heat sinks. Although, I mean, depending how well this one performs, there may be no need to replace it. The top uses the, uh, the tower heat sinks on either side, and then it uses a metal. And I love to see that this is made, actually, I think it's metal. That's metal, right? Yeah, it's metal. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's metal. It uses a metal plate on top with an Antec logo. I'm so 
Uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of seeing like uh, plastic bits all over and while they do use plastic for the fan shroud that doesn't matter to me nearly as much because when this is installed in my case it looks like this. I don't really see this part but I do see the nice brushed finish that they have on that Antec logo on the top. And I guess there's not really too much else to say about it at this point. You can see that the fan blades do stick down a little bit below where the fins of the heat sink actually reach. And so I'm guessing what you're going to get is a little bit of incidental airflow that's going to cool these little heat sink fins down here that sit directly over the CPU. And it's also going to do a fair bit of cooling for the motherboard components that are around the CPU socket. So a good example of that would be uh, these PWM heat sinks that you'll find on our VRM, PWM, whatever you want to call them. The voltage regulator heat sinks you find on many motherboards should receive a little bit of incidental airflow from that, something that you don't get with a lot of tower heat sinks. So thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Antec cooler box. I'll be hoping to bring you some cooling results as well as an installation video in the next little while.